It was a sunny morning in Festive Road, and people were going about their business as usual. At number 52, Mr. Ben was going for a walk. He stood for a moment and watched a man trying to sell a carpet to his next door neighbor. The carpet seller's unusual clothes made Mr. Ben think of the costume shop that he knew. The shop that adventures could start from. It wasn't long before Mr. Ben was in the lane with the shop. He paused outside for a moment and then went in. Inside the shop, as if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Good morning, said the shopkeeper. Which outfit would you like to try today? That one, said Mr. Ben, looking at an outfit that reminded him of the carpet seller he'd seen earlier. <laughs> uh, is there a carpet with it? laughed Mr. Ben. Yes, quite a special carpet, smiled the shopkeeper. Mr. Ben took the clothes into the fitting room, changed quickly, and looked at himself in the mirror. Then, carrying the carpet, he went through the door that always led to an adventure. Outside the door, Mr. Ben found himself in a sandy place. Wherever he looked, there was sand. Nothing but sand. Time for a think, said Mr. Ben. And he spread the carpet out and sat down. As soon as he sat down, the carpet started to move. A flying carpet, said Mr. Ben. magic carpet took Mr. Ben to a town and came down outside the gates. Mr. Ben went into the town and looked around. It was very peaceful until suddenly there was a commotion. A man was holding a boy by his sleeve. Let me go! Let me go! shouted the boy. The sleeve tore off, and the boy ran away up a side street. Mr. Ben carried on with his sightseeing. After a while, he came to a square with a pond where some children were playing. He stood and watched them. Then he noticed the boy he'd seen earlier. Just at that moment, the man appeared again. Mr. Ben was rather worried for the boy, so he followed behind them, making sure they couldn't see him. The man took the boy out of the town. They 
they stopped by some rocks and the man pointed to a hole just large enough for the boy to squeeze through. He said to the boy, inside that cave is a bottle. Bring it to me. Mr. Ben watched as the boy was pushed into the cave. And it was not long before his head reappeared through the hole. The bottle! Where is the bottle? asked the man. The boy held up an old green bottle. The man looked pleased, but before he could take the bottle, a huge bird snatched it and flew off. The bird has left the bottle on the rocks, thought Mr. Ben. Outside the cave, the man was shouting, Get that bottle, and don't come back without it! When the man had gone, Mr. Ben went over to the boy and said, I'll help you get the bottle back. The boy was delighted, and Mr. Ben flew the carpet up to the place on the rocks where the bird had left the bottle. What's in the bottle? said Mr. Ben. Let's see, said the boy. A large man appeared and said, I am the genie of the bottle. What is your wish, O oh master? Genie, said Mr. Ben. What's a genie? Well, I am a genie, said the genie. I can do anything by magic but I must obey the person who opens the bottle and lets me out. As you let me out, the genie said to the boy, I must obey you. What is your wish? What do you want? I don't know, said the boy. Could you get back into the bottle for a bit while I think, please? And the genie vanished back into the bottle. <laughs> The boy said to Mr. Ben, Perhaps the genie could build me somewhere to live, away from the town. All right, said Mr. Ben. We'll go and find a place where the genie can build you a palace. They flew off on the magic carpet, past the town, and out into the desert. This seems a good place, said Mr. Ben. Open the bottle. The genie reappeared and asked the boy, What is your wish, O oh master? Please, um, I would like a palace, said the boy. The genie smiled, and in a flash, a palace appeared. That's beautiful, said the boy. But could it have some grass and flowers around it? And some trees. It's so hot in the desert, said the boy. How about some water? That's just right, said the boy. And the genie went back into the bottle. Come on, said the boy to Mr. Ben. Let's look around. It's a nice place, said the boy. But if I live here, I'll miss my friends in the town. And if I go back to the town, that man will make me give him the bottle. Well, said Mr. Ben, I've an idea that could put everything right. The boy listened to Mr. Ben's idea and smiled. He took the stopper out of the bottle. What is your wish, O oh master? the genie asked. 
I want you to make a cave near the town and fill it with bottles just like yours. It is done, O oh master, said the genie. Thank you, said the boy, and gave the bottle to the genie. I'm giving the bottle to you, said the boy, so that now you belong to yourself. And you can have this palace to live in. Now, let's fly to the cave, said Mr. Ben. But before they could use the carpet, there was a flash. And they found themselves in the cave. It was just as the boy had asked for it to be, full of bottles. Lots and lots of bottles. Next, Mr. Ben hid while the boy went into the town to fetch the man. After a while, Mr. Ben heard the man come into the cave and start to search for the bottle with the genie in it. The boy and Mr. Ben watched, but they knew that the man could never find the bottle that he wanted. A little later, the boy slipped away to find his friend. A man appeared beside Mr. Ben. Uh, come outside a moment, sir, he said. Mr. Ben smiled. He knew what to expect. He walked out of the cave, and there he was, back in the fitting room of the shop. He changed back into his own clothes. And returned the outfit. I do enjoy my visits to your shop, said Mr. Ben. Thank you, said the shopkeeper. See you again soon. From the door, Mr. Ben waved goodbye. Back in Festive Road, children were playing as usual. At his gate, Mr. Ben went to get his door key out of his pocket. But instead, he found the stopper out of the genie's bottle. I thought I'd thrown that away, he said. Now I can keep it to help me remember. Mm -hmm.